Okay. You guys wanted this, so here's a little tour of my 3D printed station. If I can get my chair out of the way. Well, here it is. Crazy Cory's whatever I named the series. It's probably not going to be a very thing, a, a, a thing at all. Uh, yeah, so I think the last time you saw whatever happened was I printed out a bunch of drag chains for the cables. I'll get you a close-up in a minute. So let me just give you an overall tour of the printer station that I have. If you observe on top here, I have a dry box, humidity sensor, little 3D parts, desiccant on the bottom to keep it nice and uh, dry. Uh, from that, I found a few parts on Thingiverse. Maybe I'll link them, maybe I'm not. Probably won't find them, but we'll see. Um, some Thingiverse uh, printed parts to connect a little push connect brass fitting to a Teflon tube, uh, PTFE, 2 millimeter, two millimeter inside diameter wide, all the way down into the inside through a hole in the top of this lac table, which I had to um, modify the original Prusa style enclosure. Um, expanded it to about four inches tall. Uh, cover that off with some wood I found in the garage. And um, put some LED lightings on the inside. And on the other side of this door, maybe you can tell, maybe you can't, I have another hydrometer hydrometer. These also tell me the temperature on the inside, so right now it's currently sitting about 90 degrees on the inside. Enclosure is good for ABS prints, which need um, a, a static temperature or whatever you call it. I don't know, a steady um, increase, steady temperature? <laughs> they don't like breezes or gusts of wind. Um, reduces the warping and everything, but I'm just printing PLA. I'm making a little puzzle from Maker Muse. Um, I've already added the ball, so it's um, just starting to finish up. I've just got a few more hours left on it. What else? I have a screen cover for the nighttime, so this thing isn't projecting light everywhere. So I can just cover this up, and boom, no more light. The only thing that emits light is the BL touch sensor that I've covered with a little bit of black tape um, over the bright LED so it's not red everywhere. And another source of light would be the filament sensor which has a little blue LED um, which I will probably cover up with some more black tape. But we shall see. Um, I'm not too sure if that's a functional aspect of it or not. Well, you can probably see that this is an Ender printer. Uh, it is the V2. I had some fun trying to change out the hot end to the uh, Titan Arrow um, with the V6 hot end. Um, there was a mount air duct BL touch sensor uh, adapter for it too on Thingiverse. Maybe I will put the links down. Maybe I won't. Well, that's what I'm using. I forget the gentleman who made it. Uh, with a person, I'm not too sure. I did it, but yes. Bought a little pancake stepper motor, heat sink, slap those on there, put everything together, and now I can print a little bit easier direct drive. Uh, from there, I'm starting to. Well, you can't really see it, huh? No. What can you see? What can I tell you about here? Well, I have the tush. That is the um, the ultimate spool holder. I don't use that quite often as much as I used to. I just have everything in my dry box that has a little just a PVC pipe keeping everything you know suspended in place so it's not dragging around. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it for now. Let me get you a bit closer shot and see uh, what else is going on. In addition to the stream cover, I've also printed out a knob that's different than the one that they give you, just so that you have a little more control. There's a little divot in there to help put your finger in there and you can scroll a little easier. So that way if you're setting the temperatures, you can scroll a bit instead of having to flick the whole thing and it goes up all the way to 270 whatever. Um, yeah, 
So uh, I have printed out that knob. It's a little easy to control now. Um, this white ribbon cable is an SD card adapter that I've moved to the outside so I don't have to use a small micro SD. I can just use a regular standard SD card size. Um, or is it mini SD? I don't remember. I don't use it anymore. I don't care. Other than that, I've also printed out a mount for my Waze Cam Pan, um, but I will be um, making a Raspberry Pi Octo Print um, Cam as well. I might have to swap place with that. But yeah, this is just for me to, you know, get me started and watch over my prints while I'm at work or biking or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm planning on also moving the screen on the outside, so it's a little more accessible there. Um, what else? What else? Added some LEDs, as you can see. Maybe I've mentioned that, maybe I haven't. Um, and, right. This is my food dehydrator I used to dry out my filament. Um, each roll of filament I get, I put in there for, well, PLA is about four hours at 65 degrees Celsius or so. And right now I have some TPU, and that's a little bit lower. I've got it at about 52C right now, and that's been going overnight. And we'll probably finish up in uh, about seven more hours? Not sure, but we'll see. Um, other than that, I have... Maybe you can just get a peek of it. I got little wise plugs, so that I can remotely turn on and off the lights. Set them on schedules so that it doesn't... I don't know. Fun. I also have my printer connected to a wise plug too, so that way when the print is done, it's not just sitting there fan spinning. Um, I can turn it off remotely and say, it's done. You can also catch a little bit of this. This is just my timer for the dehydrator. But this can, this radioactive sticker, is actually, maybe you can see, maybe you can't, a UV curing station for resin prints. Um, I don't have a resin printer just yet, but I am planning on buying one. Um, I've printed out a diffuser just with white PLA Plus from eSun uh, in vase mode with a little fuzzy skin you can um, take off in Cura, that setting there. Um, it came out pretty nice. Um, I did print it with a rat though, so you know, a little bit extra adhesion doesn't hurt. There you go. Resin curing. And it also has a turntable inside. Don't mind the little bit of filament. This is the same TPU that I'm currently drying. And it fluoresces, which is really cool. Like that. Ooh, ah. Fluorescent. It's like a light cannon almost. I'll get you a closer look on the inside so we can see where I put the, uh, the drag chains, huh? Yeah? So, don't mind the angle. And don't mind me. My hair. Crazy quarantine hair. Who cares? Alright? But here we go. I have... There's that mount for the cam. Uh, and the drag chains. Uh, this one I do find that maybe I have a few too many links in it. It does um, squish up against the back bit of the plexiglass there. I'm not going to cut any piece out of it because I just want this to be as whole less as possible to reduce the draft inside. Um, but yeah, so far the, the, Z chan the Z chain works perfectly. The Y chain I might have to reduce in, you know, in length. Uh, but other than that, I have plans for printing out um, guards or like dust guards and other bits, because if you do check inside, if you look at them inside there, there's little bits of um, filament strands and who knows what else is in there. Yeah, you almost also notice that this like XT60 style plug is an MT60 or MT90, I forget. MT60. Uh, this is a three three prong plug, so it has your your positive, your neutral, and your ground. Uh, because when you disconnect your power supply, like I have, I'll show you the underside of this. Um, when you disconnect your power supply from your 3D printer, that removes the ground from your printer. Um, and if 
yeah, you only have your positive and uh, neutral up into the printer main board. Um, and if you do have a floating voltage, well, that's not going to be fun for anybody who touches any bit of bare metal. Let's see, what else can I show you? I guess I'll show you the underside, maybe. That's where I keep my power supply unit. Um, I put a Noctua fan on there, so I'll show you what I did about that. Mm -hmm. mm. Here, you can see the up underside of my nose and my mustache quite clearly. Hmm. But you can also see the power supply. You see, I, can, I have removed it from the printer itself, so that way there's an overheat inside the enclosure. Um, because, as you saw earlier, it was 90 degrees inside. And, well, 90 Fahrenheit, whatever. And this guy doesn't like high temperatures, so what you did, what I did is I pulled off it from the... Oh, you just saw it stop there. I pulled it off from the printer, and I slapped it originally on the other side of this power strip. Um, or was it this side? Or was it the other side? It was one of them. Um, and it was mounted more vertically rather than this horizontal position. And um, I actually didn't have this three table set up. So what this was, uh, it was right up against the underside of my bed and I did not want it to suck in the air. Um, like it would, it would have been obstructed if I had kept it that way. So I designed and printed out these standoffs. Maybe I'll slap them up on Thingiverse. Maybe I won't. But I did print out these standoffs, so they stand about uh, five or six centimeters on the thinner side, and then maybe a couple centimeters off. Or, did I say centimeters? I meant millimeters on the thicker side. Um, so that way there is a little bit of a gap between the wood and the power supply. Um, I have found this design on Thingiverse, which replaces the original onboard fan, uh, cooling fan for the PSU, with a... 92 millimeter fan. Um, I'm not too sure what size. Um, but yes, this is an Octua fan because um, it's quiet. I let this go when I'm sleeping. The only fan that I hear is the one that cools down the Titan. And I've been thinking about replacing that one as well with an Octua. However, even though they are the same um, CFM, that doesn't necessarily mean it has the same force, so... Uh, I don't know. I probably shouldn't be letting this in the go in the same room while I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Anyway, I think that's just about it. Uh, one more thing, I guess. It was on the paint can to store the USB and this bottle opener, or can opener, whatever you want to use it for. I designed and printed out some hooks just to keep the wires wound up. And this guy in place. This one's a little toy, but it's fine. Um, I also printed out another one so that you can hang the, uh, the pail from. It's kind of cool. Now, the since this has a radius, I designed uh, two different style of hooks. One flat so you can stick it up on flat surfaces like this table, and then another one you can stick it on the curved surface of a one gallon paint can. So it works out nice and dandy like that, right? Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this fun little tour of my 3D printer station. I hope to add a small resin printer as well, like a standard or a mini size, whatever. Not the Photon Zero, because I heard that is a pain in the butt. Um, but maybe something like an Elegoo Mars? I don't know. I'm waiting for that next step in technology where um, it's maybe a 4K screen on the standard size that's not $500 and not made by Frozen. Something nice with a, fil a filter in it would be cool too. Uh, something mono. Some... Yeah, we'll see. I want to make Dungeons & Dragons figurines for my buddies and myself. That's all. That's it this time, I swear. There's no other things. There's no more paint cans. There's no more... That's it. Okay.